In the previous videos, we learned how to build layouts. In this tutorial, we'll take it to the next level by designing our website with responsiveness in mind. Above the canvas, on the right-hand side, we can see that the default canvas width is 1200 pixels, the desktop view. The existing media queries that we currently support are shown on the screen. Style changes cascade both up and down. So any change made on a particular width will be visible on any screen with a width less than that particular width. Additionally, any inherited styles from a higher breakpoint can be overridden. You can enable a media query by dragging these sliders on the sides of the canvas, resizing it. Or by selecting an option from the top right of the canvas. If a media query is enabled, a fixed message will be displayed at the bottom of the page. You probably noticed that the media query for 991 pixels is highlighted in blue. If we take a look, we can see a different color for each preset width. In order to make our whole page responsive, we'll have to take it one section at a time. Starting with the navbar, if we check the 767 pixels media query or any of the widths below that, we see that our content doesn't fit the screen anymore. For this specific case, let's decide that when we're at or below 767 pixels, all of our buttons will collapse within a hamburger menu, depicted by a menu icon. Let's select the button containers and hide them. You can see that immediately after we edit a property in a section from the inspector, that section's title color turns into the appropriate media query color, indicating that a change has been made in that section at that specific media query. If we want to remove the change, we can simply left-click on the section title and choose Reset Values. Let's go ahead and change it back to Hidden. To replace it, we'll also add a hamburger icon from the Assets Manager. Let's switch our media query to desktop view, more specifically at 1200 pixels. We don't want to see this menu icon, so we need to hide it. There we go, but now we want to make it so that it's only visible at or below the 767 pixels media query. If we go ahead and play around with the sliders, we can see the change taking effect. And there we go, that's it for the navbar. For the hero section, let's enable the 991 pixels media query. Let's select the parent container and set its flex direction to column. We'll now select both text elements and center them. We'll make the image 80% width and we'll add a top margin. You can see here that we can't delete the margin right property if it's being inherited from a higher media query. That's why when deleting the value, it will automatically override it with zero pixels. We will also edit the position of the little bullets in the direction that we want. For the benefits section, the layout looks fine at 991 pixels. On a lower media query we'll want to make the heading a bit smaller and we'll also want to center it. For the card components, we can see that two cards on the same row make it look a bit cramped, so we will just want to set the component to full width on any screen that has a width of less than 767 pixels. For that, we'll go in the component editor and set the 100% width from there. Here's the final result. Now, we've built a fully responsive layout. See you in the next video where we'll be working with states.